the patients that we offer lung transplant to usually have very limited survival. Their expected survival is usually less than 10 years. So even though the average transplant recipient survives approximately five years, nevertheless, it's still you know, a success from a survival perspective. In addition to that, it provides much improved quality of life. Patients you know, don't use oxygen, and in general, being able to breathe beats everything else. In addition to that, there's no limitation on the long-term survival. We have survivors that sometimes you know, are alive 20 years down the road. So there's no expiration date. The fact that it says five years doesn't mean that five years, that's it. So the most important you know, risk that you have to deal with is the operation itself. Uh, there's a condition that's called primary graft dysfunction that occurs in about 10 to 15 percent of patients early after the operation. Basically, the new lung doesn't work properly. And when you've had an operation and a new lung that doesn't work properly, that sets you up for a lot of other complications. Uh, the mortality rate of this complication is pro probably about 35-40%. So that's the main survival problem early on. For the people that make it through, you know, this, the other problems that we have is the common ones, rejection and infection. If you have a lot of rejection, then your graft doesn't work well. And if you have rejection, you usually have to use more immunosuppression, so you're more prone to infection. And for long-term survivals, the increased risks of immunosuppression include, you know, having diabetes, kidney failure, heart problems, and cancer. So if you add all those things up, they make up for the majority of the reasons why things don't go well. Uh, so lung is a very, uh, first of all, it's an organ that gets exposed to the air all the time. So as a result, you have a major you know, bombardment of infectious microorganisms all the time. So therefore, you're more likely to get an infection uh, you know, as a lung recipient. Second part about it, it's a very uh, active, immune active organ, it has a lot of lymphoid tissue and a lot of different things. So as a result, it's more likely to reject. Uh, third, the operation itself is probably more complicated than other organs like kidney. I'm not saying necessarily like heart and liver, but for example, for kidney transplant. So if you add all those things together, they create, you know, uh, significant, you know, problems with long-term outcomes. First thing you know that comes up is that we have more you know potential recipients than what we have donors. So despite the fact that we've changed the allocation and we've managed to increase the number of uh, uh, transplants that occur, there's still more you know deaths. There's still deaths on the waiting list. Uh, so some of the ethical issues ha go how you know we give you know who allocate the organs, whether we give them locally, we give them nationally. Uh, there's also ethical issues as far as you know how you select you know the recipients. So is it appropriate you know to select a recipient who would live you know six months? but with a transplant maybe you made their average survival two years versus a person that maybe would live two years but the average survival, you know, they give them a transplant is seven years or eight years. Another big issue that was uh, in the forefront actually last year uh, was uh, should kids take priority over adult, adults? And this was a very publicized case that I think everybody knows from a year ago. Uh, and then, of course, with more and more, you know, ways of uh, techniques of supporting patients, we can now, you know, transplant very, very sick patients but very, very sick patients tend to have worse outcomes than, you know, healthier patients. Uh, but again, you know, those are patients that would have died otherwise. So where do you, you know, draw the line and say that uh, the risk is too high or, you know, the resources that we put in are too much for what we're getting back? That would make a big, big difference, not only in lung, but in every other organ transplant. So uh, if, uh, you know, everybody became an organ donor, we probably could double, you know, the number of organs that we have available and reduce mortality on the wait list. And uh, from my side, what I'm going to say is that, uh, you know, donation uh, is something that uh, is uh, based on the altruism of the patients and the families. Uh, but we always, uh, the teams, you know, that do the transplant, the teams that take care of the patients are very separate. So ethically, those things are, you know, very separate. So there's nothing that is malicious as far as, you know, donating, you know, the organs. It can only help, you know, people.